Pokemon Imperialism finally meets Sinnoh. 20 Pokemon all battling over Sinnoh to see who can conquer it all. How it works? Well, here's a map of the Sinnoh region. We're going to take 20 of your favorites and place them on the map. Each turn, we're going to spin a wheel to determine the challenger, and then we'll spin an arrow deciding what direction they're going to fight. The winner of this battle will then claim both territories, while the loser will get eliminated. Maybe. We will continue to do this until there is one Pokemon remaining claiming victory. We are back with some more Pokemon Imperialism. As you guys heard, there are going to be twists in this episode. You gotta wait, turn 5. The end of turn 5 will get to them. And as you guys saw, we are immediately getting into a battle. We have Garchomp versus the big and powerful Magnezone. Comment below who you think is going to win this all. I don't know. I think Garchomp has a huge chance. It's so far away from the ice types, like... I don't know, I don't know, but let's get into the fight. Here we go. The start of Garchomp's destruction already, probably, because, oh boy, what is Magnezone going to do when a big old ground move is coming, like, super strong at it? Like, I don't know. Okay, starting off, Garchomp uses Dig. Like I said, this move might just end the fight right here, right now. Flash Cannon, it's not going to hit. Garchomp dodges. Next up. Here we go, Dig. One shot. That easy. Out of here, Magnazone. You are gone. I really think that Garchomp's gonna just absolutely destroy here. Like, who's gonna slow it down? The ice types? Maybe. Maybe. But it's a long way for him. We have to get into the next wheel spin. And with Magnazone down, there is just 19 more remaining. And we are going to see another ground type go at it. Gliscor. Gliscor is at the bottom of the map. Could honestly face Garchomp. But I think it's going slightly away. Yeah. Gliscor just barely dodges Garchomp. So we will be seeing Gliscor versus Yan Mega. Back to back ground types. Super weak to ice Pokemon. Here we go. Battle number two. Yan Mega versus the ground type Gliscor. They're both flying. They are both flying Pokemon. This could be an interesting fight, but Gliscor does have the slight advantage here. As long as it uses the right moves. Yan Mega's faster. Oh my. Oh my. Hold the phone. I think Yan Mega just won this. Without even having a chance to do something, Yan Mega just air slashes Gliscor into just total destruction. That was wild. Wow. Okay. And just like that, another Pokemon has been eliminated and not the one I was thinking. Young Mega. Do you have a chance? I don't know. It does have a big old powerful electric type sitting right next to it. But we're going to spin the wheel again. We're going to hope to get out of this bottom region. Let's see some more fights from other places. And our next fighter is going to be... Magmortar. I was like, Lucario? Lucario's another big threat in this. I wouldn't count Magmortar out either. It is indeed surrounded by some beast, but hey. It goes up. And up is towards Glaceon. Round three time. Glaceon versus Magmortar. Now, both of these Pokemon really only know one type of move. And luckily for one of them, They've got the right kind of move. Here we go. Starting it off. Magmortar goes for Lava Plume. This might just end the fight. Barely. Barely. Glaceon holds on but gets burned. I mean, it doesn't affect Glaceon's special attacking, but this Freeze Dry is not in the fight. Barely. That did nothing. And the burn also doesn't win the fight. But one more turn and it's over. And what is Glaceon going to do? Here we go. Magmortar just goes for Lava Plume again. Rest in peace, Glaceon. You are gone. You are indeed gone. Three rounds down. Three Pokemon eliminated. There's still some powerful fighters all across. Like, yeah, some strong Pokemon have won. But Sinnoh is full of strong Pokemon. So, that means we just got to get to the next fight. Spin the next wheel. The wheel is spinning. Our next opponent is going to be... Yan Mega again. Oh boy, are we gonna see Yan Mega versus Garchomp? 
Or are we gonna get the new mod? The arrow is spawn. And we're going that way. That looks like... That looks close, but I am slightly leaning in favor of Garchomp. Very barely clipping Garchomp. Our two titans are about to battle it out. Here we go, round number four is about to begin. Garchomp, Yon Mega, two powerhouses so far. And this is round four. So at the end of this round, we'll get to round five. And at the finish, our twist will happen. So I'm gonna give a slight little spoilers. If your favorite Mon is gone, don't count them out. That's just a secret. Let's get into this fight first. We got some battling to do. Starting it off, Garchomp's faster. That's a drag. That did huge damage. This was Yon Mega last time. And Garchomp just destroyed. Like I said, Garchomp might win this whole thing. One more Dragon Claw is all that's needed. And it goes for it. And Yon Mega, you are out. But I won't say eliminated just yet. Here is a new picture of our map. Garchomp is spreading its power. But we've got one more fight until our twist happens so let's spin a pokemon let's see who the final fighter will be before the twist 16 pokemon remain we are spinning and we will get rampardos which is scarily close to garchomp yeah if rampardos goes right it's doomed but if it goes left it's got a chance and it's going up i think that's something else up is indeed Rotom, and Rotom works a little bit differently. Before each round it fights, I will spin a wheel to determine which Rotom form it's going to be. But you guys won't see that until the fight. So let's get into it. Round 5 fight, and our boy Rotom happened to choose one of the worst forms. Rotom Heat going against the Rock type. What are you doing? So this could be over for our friend. Starting it off, Rampar- Oh, Rotom's faster. Goes for Hex. How much is this going to do? Okay, that's some solid damage. Assurance? Equal amount of damage. Time to fire back. Rotom goes for Uproar. That's really not that much. And it's caused an Uproar. It's going to keep using the Uproar. Rock Smash. Ooh. Ooh. That's, that's some solid damage from Rampardos. Following it up. Rotom still is using Uproar. Still not doing a ton. Assurance is coming through. Rotom lives. This fight's way, way closer than I thought. But this is probably the last turn. Rotom goes for uproar. Rampardos lives on 8 HP. Head smashes the Rotom to the end. Wow. Goodbye, Rotom. That's my boy. That's one of my mo favorite Gen 4 mons. So, like, proof it's not rigged. But, like I said, it is now twist time. That is right. A space-time distortion just happened. And look, the map, it's messed up. The map is completely different now. Other than, I guess, Garchomp. He's still just chilling in his main spot. But, like I said, there's now there's now some Ice-type Pokemon next to Garchomp that could mess it up. And by some, I mean just Frostlass. But, hey, every five turns, this is going to happen. And you guys might notice one thing. There is an empty spot. Remember when I said don't, like, feel bad if your favorite Pokemon is gone? It is time to spin the wheel. Who will be returning? And when I was typing these all down... I realized I lost three Pokemon that are in my, like, top Sinomons, Gliscor, Rotom, Magnetone. So, I personally could be very happy. But, we're not getting one of those. We're getting Glaceon. Okay. Interesting. Remember how I said that there were some Ice-type Pokemon next to Garchomp? Well, now there are two. And... The EV bros are connected. So, hey, hey, if you like Glaceon, it's back. 
We're going to have this twist happen again in five more rounds. But we got to spin the wheel to see who will be fighting next. Please not Garchomp. Okay, 16 Pokemon still remain left here. And we are... Okay, get past Garchomp. That's good. We're getting Lucario. I know that's a fan favorite up in here. And Lucario has a bunch of directions it can go. Just as long as it's not completely west. And I think that's exactly what I said not to do. Come on, Lucario. Lucario's going to go still west. Lucario's gonna go off to the east completely. Leafeon. Oh boy, one EV member came back. Will we see the defeat of another one? Let's get into the fight. Leafeon, Lucario. Round number six. Here we go. Leafeon, which looking at its move is an awful disadvantage it's at, versus Lucario. I know a mod that a lot of people probably want to win. Would not surprise me if that was the vote. Double edge. That did respectable damage. The recoil is going to hurt. The meteor mash. Wow. Leafeon did honestly not that bad that round. Here we go. Lucario is going to E speed. Leafeon's going to live. And that was a critical hit. Wow. Wow. Lucario hangs on. 52 HP. Leafeon's very, very low. But could it get one more hit and knock out the Lucario? Oh, boy. Double edge again. Lucario lives on seven. And Leafeon takes itself out. That was super close. For moves that were not very effective. Here we go. There's a lot of blues, a lot of, like, dark blue purples on this map, which hopefully won't get too confusing. Some of you mons, you need to just faint. I don't know which ones. I don't care which ones. I'm just hoping for good battles. And to get good battles, we have to spin that wheel. Okay. With Leafeon removed, there are now only 15 Pokemon remaining, and we are going to see Float Soul. Honestly, a very underrated Pokemon. I know a lot of people use this Mon on their teams growing up. I certainly did. But in the grand scheme of things now, I would say Floatzel's heavily underrated. Okay, Floatzel. What direction? You can fight any direction. So we have to determine where you will fight. And Floatzel is going to fight down, but slightly left how are you gonna let me call you underrated and then just be like i'm attacking an electric type you know what if you win more power to you let's get into this fight here we go this is floatzel asking to be removed from the map like you're gonna challenge an electric type pokemon as a water type this is not gonna end well starting us off floatzel's gonna go for crunch get the defense drop nope thunder punch Bye. Bye, Floatzel. Wow. Like I said, remove from the map. It's not over for Floatzel. There is the time space distortions, but the map has been updated. Less Pokemon are on here. A lot of, like I said, this map is full of solid Pokemon. There's still a ton of solid Pokemon and very likely still your favorite remaining on here. Let's just remove that and spin. Okay, a lot of good options. We haven't seen Garchomp in a while, and we're going to keep it that way because Weavile was not a nice type next to Garchomp. And looking at this, Weavile can only go one way, and that's against something it's weak against, a fighting type Pokemon. Is this going to be back-to-back -back rest in peace on the competitors? The challengers? Probably. Here we go. Glade versus Weavile. Weavile really does not have the best moveset, just in general. It's decent, but not great. And I think it's going to take a great moveset and a great mon to truly win this whole thing. 
Glade does have a great moveset. Weavile goes for the Ice Shark. Wow, that did quite a bit of damage. Leaf Blade, like, the coverage is all there. That was just a neutral move, and it did that much damage. Weavile's gonna have to get lucky. It goes for Ice Shard again. I mean, respectable damage. Leaf Blade's gonna finish it off, but I would say respectable damage. See you, Weavile. You have been not eliminated. I won't say eliminated just yet, but you've taken an L. So here is the updated map. There's a few Pokemon making some moves. I'd like to see a couple more. Like, look at Frostlass. Like, that's just sitting too comfortable. You can take out Garchomp. You can do some big things. Rhyperior, Staraptor, Mamoswine, Honchkrow. Like, all of them. I want to see all of them do at least one thing. And maybe, just maybe, they're going to pull up on this wheel spin. 13 Pokemon remain. Our next Mon is going to be... Glaceon again. Is this going to be the death of Garchomp? I like Garchomp, but like, upsets. Upsets are crazy. Okay, you got a few directions you can go in, and two of those directions are not bad. Spinning the arrow, Glaceon is deciding to go not towards Garchomp. And it's going the one way that it really... It's not a bad direction, but it's not a great direction. It's going to take on Electivire. So Glaceon was the first Pokemon to get a second life. Will it be the first one to lose it within the five rounds that it came back? Like, there is some potential for that. Starting us off, Electivire is faster, goes for the Thunderbolt. Glaceon kind of eats that. Like, we really didn't get to see Glaceon's full ability. Wow, that did a ton of damage. Because it was fighting a fire type. Now it's not. It's got some nice power. Icy Wind could have been huge. Electivire was faster. Emphasis on was. Like, it's just it's just strong. Freeze Dry. Critical hit! Electivire has fainted. Glaceon has not ruined its opportunity just yet. It came back. And it said, I am going to go as far as I possibly can. Electivire, you're gone, but maybe not eliminated just yet. <laughs> when I say blue is really taking over this map, I mean it. Like, look at all this color. There's a few reds and browns and a green. That could change it, but these blues are some powerful Pokemon. We are getting into round 10, the end of this battle, the twist of the time-space distortion thing will happen again. So, to figure out who it's going to matter to, we gotta get into this fight. Because even if you lose this fight, you could come back. 12 Pokemon remain going into this round. 12 Pokemon are gonna remain going out of this round. And our fighter is going to be Rampardos again. Oh, this is pretty good. Okay. Couple options. It's really good against one of them. It's decent against the others. Except if it somehow clips Lucario. There is a chance for that. But we gotta spin this arrow. And this arrow is deciding it's going down and slightly to the left. And that is indeed Honchkrow. Now we're almost getting all these Pokemon that I haven't fought through it. I mean, it's blue versus blue. Like, clear some color off the board. So I just realized Rampardos has fought in both of the twist rounds. Last time it eliminated Rotom. This time is it going to eliminate Honchkrow? Maybe. Starting it off, Honchkrow is faster. Foul Play does huge damage. Head Smash misses! No way! Is Honchkrow going to win this? Oh no, Wing Attack does not kill Rampardos. Rampardos responds with a Rock Smash, not a Rock Move. And I think Honchkrow just pulled up the upset. Wow, Foul Play, big damage. I mean, the miss was also huge. Foul Play should just finish it off. Rampardos, you have been removed from the map. But like I said, it is time for the twist, the time, space, distortion. 
is about to happen. The map has changed again. As you guys know, the toys just happened. And there's one, one empty spot for a Pokemon to come back. Maybe relive its dream of being the very best like no one ever was. Maybe it's your favorite Pokemon. But we gotta spin that wheel. There it is. We're spinning. We're spinning. Big money, no Pokemon. Big money. Oh, Rampardo's gonna get back in. Hey, respectable. He already took out one Pokemon, lost in the last round. Like, he's fighting every five rounds. We need him for round 15. It just makes sense. He's coming back in. Place him in the empty spot in the map. Get rid of the blue. Bring the blue back. Listen, this whole map is going to be blue before any other color takes control. I feel this blue map is just going to be blue. But we have to spin a Pokemon. Maybe a blue Pokemon will be eliminated. We just have to see. And we're spinning. And our challenger for round number 11. Okay, we haven't seen him in a while. It's not Garchomp. I was like, we haven't seen him in a while, but Garchomp is back. No, it's Lucario. Lucario is back. I don't know where Lucario is on the map anymore. All this flip-flopping, changing... Okay, Lucario's on top, and it can go down or down. Two directions. That's all it could do. So we're spinning the arrow, and which down direction Lucario is going to go? That is not down. That is down. Very down. That down is Luxray. Lucario versus Luxray. We are getting rid of a blue. But which blue? We'll have to get into the fight to see. Here we go. Round 11. Luxray. Very solid Pokemon. I know a lot of people like Luxray. Lucario. Fan favorite. Like, there's that. Whoa! Intimidate almost played off. This is Luxray's first battle. And Lucario just countered its ability just like that with inner focus. Okay, I see you, Lucario. I don't think this is going to be... I don't know. I think this fight's going to be short, but very quick. Starting it out, Lucario's going for the extreme speed. Solid damage. Spark. Paralysis here is huge. Does not get it, though. Okay. Luxray. Lucario. Here we go. Lucario's faster. Bone Rush. Misses. Oh, boy. Luxray Wild Charge. This might kill. It does. Wow. I think that's personally an upset. Lucario's liked by many, but Lucario, you still can come back. So Lucario fans, do not worry. Here is the newly updated map. I thought it was just going to be dark blue on that whole side. Dark blue slash purple. But Luxray... Luxray, be careful. You're sitting next to some ground types, but Luxray. Big moves. Big moves. Okay, we're going to have to find out who the next Pokemon's going to be. We got a wheel for that. And our next opponent is going to be... Another new Pokemon? Rhyperior. Yo. I've always been kind of meh on Rhyperior, but it's kind of like slowly growing on me over time. So, Rhyperior, what can you do? Who are you going to fight? That's the better question. You got two options. And the ice type's really not where you want to go. This arrow will be massive. That does not point to anything. Try again. Oh, boy. Did you just... You just... You just messed up, Rhyperior. Maybe it's weak to Glaceon but strong against Glaceon. So we have to see in a battle. Let's get to it. Round 12, Glaceon faces potential its second elimination. And Rhyperior, they're both strong against each other. This fight is probably going to last like one or two moves, and that's it. But could Glaceon lose again? 
Here we go. Glaceon's faster. Freeze dry. 13 HP. The freeze! Rhyperior was frozen solid. Did not dethaw. Wow. I know what Rhyperior was going for. It was going for Stone Edge. And if it connected, I think that would have been a definite one shot. So the freeze was mega clutch for Glaceon, in my opinion. I mean, I guess Stone Edge could always miss, but wow. Okay, finish it off. Glaceon hits the Blizzard and just wins. Rhyperior, you fought hard. That's another blue. That's another territory for the blue team. We're not even going against, like, Mon versus Mon. It's just blue versus everything. Like I said, it's just blue versus everything with, like, I would say four, five non-blue remaining Mons versus five blue remaining Mons. Frostlast you can kind of put on either team. Like, it's, it's close, but it's purple here. It is purple color. But let's see. Will we get another blue versus something? Red versus blue. And it is spun. And we are going to see red. Mag Mortar. It's been a while. It's close. Mag Mortar is most likely going to hit something that's not blue. Eliminating another non blue mon. But maybe Garchomp. But is that a wise choice? We gotta spin this arrow though, and the arrow determines that Magmortar is going to the right, which means it's going to be one of the two that's not blue. That that's Star Raptor. Magmortar versus Star Raptor. I hope some of you guys got the Rooster Teeth joke. Rest in peace, some of our childhoods. They were so impactful, but. Things, good things don't last forever. We get the Intimidate, but against Magmortar, that's not really that big of a deal. Magmortar is a very, very special really attacking Mon compared to Electivire. It's just gonna, it's gonna just hit moves. Staraptor uses Takedown. Wow. The burn. It's not Guts. It's not a regional bird with Guts. And the recoil. Fire Blast connects. Is this over for Staraptor? It's not. The burn does not end it. This is close. Oh, this is close. This could be a tie. Brave Bird connects, knocks out Magmortar, but the recoil damage is going to take Staraptor down. Who wins? Whoever it says wins, wins. I'm going to think it's Staraptor. Staraptor did win. Okay. You know, that burn really didn't do anything, but this color, this this map is just getting very, very similar colors. And if we make it to round 15, I will probably change a few of them up. Not all of them, but a few of them just to add some variety in colors. But to get to round 15, we have to spin this wheel again. Who will be the next fighter? We're down to nine Pokemon? Wow. I, I just glossed over the top 10 just like that. Nine Pokemon remain. And our next challenger is going to be Star Raptor again. I don't know if that is a smart choice. We'd have to take a look at the map. Okay, it's not a bad choice. Fighting Garchomp's not bad. Fighting Glade is good. Fighting Glaceon, which is the smallest chance, is bad. Let's spin it. Let's spin it. Let's spin it up. That's something. That is Garchomp. Garchomp, a very sick mon that was used on a lot of people's teams. Star Raptor, one of the first mons everyone caught and put on its team. Going at it, who is the best teammate? And will the blue team continue to prevail? So, Staraptor is a bit of a loose cannon here. It's got Brave Bird. It's got Close Combat. It's got Take Down. All moves that are kind of hurting. That Intimidate's actually pretty good. But at the same time, all the recoil that Staraptor is going to take plus, Rough Skin on Garchomp is going to add up. I don't know who wins. 
this could be very close. I say that a lot. Garchomp's faster, goes for the Dragon Claw. Okay, not the biggest of damage. Close combat, also not the biggest of damage. Interesting. The Dragon Claw made sense because of Intimidate. Rough skin. Like I said, that's big damage. Wow. Next up, Garchomp's digging, throwing. Throwing for content, Garchomp. Brave Bird. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay. This could get very down to the wire. Rough skin plus three coil, though. Can Star Raptor live? Okay. Garchomp goes back up. Does not affect Star Raptor, obviously. Brave Birds. How much is this going to do? Garchomp lives. Rough skin, big damage. Recoil, big damage. They're both in red. And Garchomp is faster. Just as long as it doesn't go for dig, it gets the dub. Let us see. Garchomp's going for the slash. It connects. And Star Raptor, as dear as you are to our hearts, you cannot beat the pseudo legend Garchomp himself. And another non blue member falls. I will say, while Garchomp is winning, look at the mons that are surviving Glaceon, Frostlass, and Mamoswine. Three. Very, very strong mons against Garchomp. That if it keeps destroying a lot of things, if it destroys like Luxray and Gallade, it's going to be really, really tough for it to win the whole thing. Could just faint and then come back and re be born into the world. This is round 15, so we know Rampardos is probably going to fight, but we're going to throw my mice. I just knocked my mouse off my desk. We're going to spin the wheel just to see if Rampardos is going to be pulled, but we already know it is. Here we go. Show me the Rampardos so we can keep the tradition alive. It's not Rampardos, but it's Glaceon who is touching Rampardos. Like, look at that. Very much so touching. There's a few options, but very much so touching. Now show me the down air. Show me the Rampardos. There's no way. Is that? I'm going to count that as close enough. Just because I think it's funny that Rampardos has fought in round 5, round 10, and now round 15. Is it going to make it to round 20? We'll have to see. We'll have to get into this fight. It has the type advantage, so maybe... This is crazy because both of these mons have been eliminated. And now we know one of our revived mons are going to lose again. And for tradition, I kind of want Rampardos to survive. I don't want to speak anything to existence. It's all random. I don't control a thing other than pressing the buttons. But just to see Rampardos go at it at round 20, that'd be wild. Wild. Here we go. Glaceon is faster. Hits the blizzard. Ooh. Huh? What? That's... That's insane. Wow. I'm speechless. Like, I'm supposed to say, well, you guys know what time it is, but that just happened. Wow. Well, you guys know what time it is. It is time for the space time distortion. There we go. The map is looking slightly better now. A lot more color options rather than just blue. Blue everywhere. But we now have to determine what Mon is coming back. There's a lot of powerful Mons. We could add an Ice type. We could add something to help Garchomp fight through the Ice types. I don't know. Magmortar? Could we see the return of that? We got to spin the wheel. The Pokemon returning. After round 15 is done, 
is Leafeon. That's not really a Mon that's going to help Garchomp. It's just a Mon that's going to distract the Ice types before Garchomp. Okay, well, we revived Glaceon. Now we revive Leafeon. It's just fair. Rampardos will not be joining us in round 20. That is sad. Yeah, that really is not a safe spot for Leafeon. I mean, I guess it's strong against Mamoswine. Kind of? But, oof, that is scary. Okay, we got a ton of strong mons. The Eevee, the Eevee siblings are still in it. Luxray the cat is standing in between it. Eight mons remain. We have to spin the wheel to see what mons have a chance to continue on into the top five. Because by the end of these five rounds, we should at least know our top five. Plus the one that will be joining us in the final revival. Here we go. The wheel is spinning. Our next fight, oh, is it gonna be Leafeon? Okay, I guess Leafeon has to prove itself. Were you worthy of coming back? And it's scary because there's some ice types next to it. But we gotta spin the arrow. Our arrow points to it not being able to go that way, I don't think. Yeah, that's not a direction you can go, Leafeon. That is a direction. And because it's pointing slightly downwards, that is Luxray. Leafeon versus Luxray. The one thing that it's not weak against and actually resist. So Leafeon has a chance. But then it's going to be touching three ice types and by then it might be over. Round 16, time, Luxray, Leafeon, Cap Rose. They're going at it. One is going to win. The Intimidate. Ooh, I totally forgot about Intimidate. Intimidate might sway this towards Luxray. Okay, starting it out, Quick Attack. That's going to be nothing. That's nothing damage. Luxray, Wild Charge. Also nothing damage. They're both just doing no nothing damage. That Recoil probably did the most damage out of all of them. Going again, double edge this time, a little more damage, but still not a ton. Intimidate really pulling through, but Luxray really is only going to be hitting with these electric moves, which isn't that great. Next up, quick attack again. We already know that's not doing much, Leafeon. What are you doing, discharge? That did a bit of damage. And the paralysis. Huge clutch by Luxray, maybe? Is this the final turn? Leafeon cannot move due to paralysis. Oh boy, discharge. Leafeon lives on 6 HP, but I don't think quick attack kills, and I'm pretty sure it's going to be slower than Luxray. So wow, the clutch paralysis won that for Luxray. Leafeon, you came back, and you instantly got out. Maybe a waste of revival. It wasn't even the ice type that took Leafeon out. It was the best chance it had, maybe other than Mamoswine. But here we are. We've got seven Pokemon remaining. I don't know who to put my money on. If there wasn't so many ice types, it'd be Garchomp. Honchkrow sneakily there, but also weak to ice. Mamo? Is Mamoswine the best looking Pokemon? Out of everything other than Gallade, which is it's far away from. Yeah, but there is one more revival, so it's still anyone's game. We got this wheel to spin. Mamoswine can put in some work. Garchomp? Again? Okay. Okay. Okay, Garchomp has a few options as long as it doesn't land in that narrow space of Leafeon. It should be have a decent chance, like decent against Gallade, very good against Luxray. Arrow, time to see who. There we go. The arrow has spun, and that's not a direction. The arrow has spun again. Barely. Barely Gallade. Like, it goes So it does hit Gallade, the decent shot, the medium difficulty, and a decent expansion of land. It just puts you to more of the ice types. 
Well, more of a chance that Glaceon's gonna hit it. Okay, battle time. Both of these Mons could honestly win this whole thing. Both good Mons, great stats, good ability, good moves. Like, all around, they check all of the boxes. Now, I will say Garchomp is slightly in a worse position due to typing, but Gallade isn't much better because it's sitting next to Honchkrow. So, like, they're both really good Mons, and it wouldn't surprise me if either of these win. But they're in rough spots right now, and one is going down here. Even though one could get revived, one is going down here. Started off, we got Slash. Okay, that did decent damage. Night Slash. Decent damage, but rough skin. That is massive. I think Glade could die to another Slash. Let's see. Dragon Claw, this is probably going to do it. Glade. He fought hard, but Garchomp is just a pseudo-legend. Rough skin is crazy, and it just expands more. Here's our map. Six Pokemon remain. Three ice types, three non-ice types, two really, really weak types. Who is next up on the chopping block? I don't want to see Garchomp. Just tired of seeing it fight, and if it does fight... There's a solid chance that it's going to lose. And I like Garchomp. You know, it might be my favorite maining it or Mamoswine. Maybe Mamoswine. I kind of, I, I, I do really like me some Mamoswine. But I don't get to control that. The wheel gets to control that. And our wheel says next up, a mon that's going to make it to the top five, if it survives, is Luxray. That's scary for Luxray because of the ground types. Like, Luxray could very easily go towards Garchomp, very easily go towards Mamoswine. It's gonna have to hope that it hits Frostlass or Glaceon if it wants a really good chance of survival, especially because it's got three electric moves. Really bad move pool. But the arrow will choose that, and the arrow says Luxray is going to have to face Mamoswine. Potentially the end for our boy. You know, Luxray might have a couple advantages. Mamoswine's never fought before, so experience. And number two, probably more important, is Luxray has Intimidate. Which might slow Mamoswine's destruction a little bit, but I don't think it's going to be enough to win the fight for Luxray. I'm sorry. We have to see... Mamoswine starts with Ice Shard. That still did... Oh, that's a critical hit. That's why I was like, that still did massive damage regardless of Intimidate. But it's a critical hit. One Earthquake, though. Crunch. Still some decent damage. Mamo goes for the Earthquake. And that should do it. Luxray down. He's with us for a while. Stay strong for a while. But you know, you can't stop those powerful, powerful ground or ice type mons. And together, big power. Huge power. Well, here's your top five Pokemon. One more mon will be revived. So I guess technically not your top five because one mon will sneak into the top five. But this is your top five. Three ice type Pokemon. Garchomp. And a Honchkrow that's kind of barely done anything, but it's done more than the Frostlass up top. So, we can't hate on it. Five Mons, five options, and our Mon that will go next is going to be Garchomp. I'm going to straight up say this. If you're a Garchomp fan, this is not good for you. Because Garchomp has a few possibilities. It could go upwards towards Mamo, rightwards towards Glaceon, and the small chance that it hits Honchkrow, it takes down the one Pokemon that's not super effective against it. Is this the end of Garchomp's reign? Let's see what the arrow says. Garchomp can survive. That's downwards. Hold up. I'm going to count that as Honchkrow. I was going to say if Garchomp can survive these next two rounds... Maybe a respawn of a Pokemon that's strong against ice like Magmortar or Magnezone. We go full circle 
Bring back the Magnazone. It destroys the stuff. And then Garchomp wins. If you're a Garchomp fan. If you're not, you're hoping for this. You're praying that Garchomp gets chosen next round as well. But we got Garchomp Honchkrow. The ice types are eating here. Regardless of who wins. Here we go, top four time. This is round 19, Honchkrow. He's been kind of quiet recently. Garchomp, who's been loud this whole time. Because he's a freaking Garchomp. He's allowed to be like that. Are going to go at it. So they can see who will lose to the ice Pokemon. My money is on Garchomp. I just think Rough Skin is going to be huge. Night Slash, Slash. Ooh, that's a critical hit. The Rough Skin, though. Like I said, Rough Skin does big damage. Okay, next up, Dragon Claw. And that's it. Like, Rough Skin into Dragon Claw just ends a lot of fights. Garchomp is the winner, but at what cost is Garchomp the winner? So, these are your top four mons, technically. Like, at the end of this round, we're going to get another top four mons. These are technically your top four mons. Garchomp versus all of its enemies. Like, other than Weavile, this is all of the Ice types just ready to threaten Garchomp. But, before we see Garchomp fight an Ice type, maybe an Ice type will fight an Ice type. We gotta spin the wheel to see if that's the case. Four Mons remaining are Mon fighting in round 20, which is sadly not gonna be Rampardos. It's going to be Mamoswine. And Mamoswine could fight Garchomp, but Mamoswine could fight anything. Who will it be? <laughs> oh. Well, I called it. The end of Garchomp is here. Just too many ice Pokemon. And a fire fire. I can't even speak. If a fire type shows up. They could have win. Honestly, this fight is huge because the biggest threat should be gone. And then it's kind of anyone's game, including the revived Pokemon. Unless it's Garchomp again. Here we go. Round 20, the final twist round. Can Garchomp pull through it all and somehow, some way, take home the dub here? Starting it off, Garchomp's gonna be faster, goes for Slash, wow. It's a critical hit, that's why. And Mamoswine thrashes. Rough skin. Did Mamoswine just throw the easiest win of its life? I think it did. Dragon Claw lives on two, but the thrash is not gonna kill Garchomp. And it's gonna take the rough skin damage. And Mamoswine, the ice Pokemon who just had to click Ice Shard went down. Garchomp? Wow. Can anyone take down the Garchomp? I'm not sure. It just beat a Mamoswine. I, I'm not sure. Oh boy. You guys know what time it is. There is one more revival that can happen. So, it's time. Here we go. The final revival is here. That one tiny little spot will be taken up by a Pokemon. And for some of you, this could be the most important spin of the entire video. You guys might have been waiting for the beginning. You guys might be Magnazone fans waiting since round one, just hoping for the chance for your boy to be revived. And it will all come down to this spin. All these Pokemon have all been eliminated so far, but their journey could not be over. And they could end up winning the whole thing. We just have to spin this wheel. And our final revival is going to... There's no way. There's no way! Rodom. That boy... <laughs> wow, this is just like... Okay, I gotta put my bias aside because I'm just watching this happen, commentating as the battle happens. But I like Rotom. 
Rotom is like one of my favorite Cinnamons, one of my top 10 mons. Like, look at our channel name, the Game Dex. Like, obviously, a Rotom Pokedex is somehow involved there. And Rotom makes it through. It does get weird because it gets a random form before every battle. But uh, that could actually help it, help it. It's been sitting out for a while, but here you go. Our final four. Three rounds left. And who is going into the next fight? Garchomp is still struggling a bit. And Rotom has Levitate, so it's not like Garchomp is super strong against Rotom either. But we gotta spin the wheel. Who will be fighting for its spot in the top three? Four Mons. We're gonna get down to three. And Frostlass is finally coming out of the woodworks. It sees Garchomp. It knows it's there. And it's ready to fight. And I was kind of kidding about the Garchomp thing, but I totally forgot Frostlass is only touching Garchomp. So... Garchomp, you have to fight through your weakness to have any shot in the top three. Glaceon and Rotom are confirmed into the top three, so let's get into this fight. Round 21, and Garchomp is fighting for its life. One ice move, one tiny little speck of ice might completely destroy it. And Frostlass, who's been waiting the whole time for this exact moment, is like, yo, I am ready to win. Starting it off, Frostlass faster, hits the blizzard, and just like that, Garchomp, who has destroyed so much, is gone. You Frostlass fans, like, you've been waiting for your moment, and it happened. Like, look at all this just turn purple. The Ice Ghost has claimed so much from one fight. You do nothing. You wait for your moment. Then you strike. This is our top three. We're going down to just two Pokemon after this round. Let's see who the next fighter will be. Garchomp leaving was crazy. That was my big guess, and we're getting Rotom. So Rotom's not getting a free pass, so all you people that are like, wow, free revival into top two, that's not happening. Rotom actually has to fight, and it could be either or. This arrow will choose that. Rotom will fight upwards, but is it enough upwards? That's close. And by close, I would say that's Frostlass. So we're getting Rotom versus Frostlass. Glaceon confirmed top two right there. Neither of these mods, Rotom or Frostlass, are getting a free pass to the finale. Glaceon did some hard work, made it back to life. So, let's see who is going to win this fight. Here we go, top three, Frostlass, who's done nothing but has never lost, versus Baby Rotom. Just normal, good old Rotom. Oh boy, this ghost type versus ghost type type of action. Starting off, Frostlass goes for the Draining Kiss. That does not do much. You're going to have to do better than that. Discharge comes out. Paralysis. Paralysis? Yo, is Rotom going to win this? Hold up. Cursed Body. Discharge was disabled. But I don't think Rotom wants to go for that. I think it's got a better move and it goes for it. Hex. And Frostlass is gone. Rotom. Over most of the board, your top two, Glaceon, Rotom. Filling out all of these lands. It is an icy boy versus I don't know what. I still have to spin that wheel. Glaceon is going to challenge the big and powerful Rotom. We'll just see what form it is. Top Two, if your favorite is still here, update your comments and cheer for who you think 
is going to win this final fight. Let's get into it. Here we go, the final fight. Rotom Wash, which is going to resist most of Glaceon's hits, versus Glaceon. And I say most of, because freeze dry is a thing. Here we go. Rotom is faster. Goes for the discharge. That's decent damage. No paralysis. The freeze dry. Have I just been underestimating Glaceon my whole life? There you go. Your winner of the Sinnoh Imperialism is Glaceon.